First of all, the simplest way, see there are many ways of classifying congenital heart diseases. If you look at past publications, past textbooks and so many various uh, organizations, they have given uh, congenital heart diseases broadly into cyanotic and acyanotic, that is those having cyanosis and those not having cyanosis. Further subdivision can be based upon either pulmonary blood flow or based upon right versus left versus biventricular hypertrophy. The second classification which employs hypertrophy is more of an artificial classification and this is the one which is not favored these days in so many uh, various systems. If you follow the one which is based upon pulmonary blood flow that is not only important for your entrance exam but it questions based upon this are also asked in your super specialty entrance. Furthermore, your textbooks like Nelson as well as Mu K Park Pediatric Cardiology, they all talk about this classification. So that is the classification we will be focusing on plus we will be talking briefly about the ductus dependent cardiac diseases and their classification. So as I said, the easiest way to classify is to divide the congenital heart disease into two parts. Either there is no cyanosis, we call them as acyanotic heart disease or there is cyanosis that is cyanotic heart disease. When I say cyanosis, I mean central cyanosis and not peripheral cyanosis, right? Now, acyanotic heart diseases can further be subdivided into two parts based upon the pulmonary blood flow. First, we have acyanotic heart diseases with increased pulmonary blood flow. What does increased pulmonary blood flow mean? It means that the amount of blood going from right ventricle into pulmonary artery towards the lungs is more than normal. Obviously, it will be more than normal when right sided circulation is receiving more blood than left sided. In other words, increased pulmonary blood flow are those conditions which are also called as left to right shunt lesions. So, left to right shunt lesions are included in this category. This includes conditions like since it is acyanotic, so I am using a red pen. So, it includes your shunt lesions like atrial septal defect, it includes ventricular septal defect. It includes patent ductus arteriosus and it includes your ECD. ECD stands for endocardial cushion defect, which is the most common congenital heart disease in Down syndrome. Endocardial cushion defect is also sometimes called as atrioventricular canal defect. So, details of these diseases obviously we will discuss in the subsequent modules. So, first we have acyanotic diseases. This is the first category increased pulmonary blood flow that is shunt lesions. Second, we have acyanotic with normal pulmonary blood flow. Now, you need to understand there cannot be any category where the disease is acyanotic and there is decreased pulmonary blood flow because if pulmonary blood flow is less than normal, it means oxygenation will suffer and so the patient will become cyanotic. So, acyanotic will have only two categories those with increased pulmonary blood flow and those with normal pulmonary blood flow. Acyanotic with normal pulmonary blood flow are also called as, they are, they are usually having a obstruction, so they are called as obstructive lesions. These are the alternative names I am using in various other classifications. So, basically I am combining all of them at one place. So, the typical acyanotic obstructive lesions with normal pulmonary blood flow, it includes coarctation of aorta as the hallmark finding. As we shall see, coarctation of aorta which is critical, extremely severe form that will manifest in the neonatal period itself. Whereas the mild to moderate coarctation which is the more common variety or including the juxtaductal form that tends to occur in the childhood. So, in general coarctation of aorta is classified as a normal pulmonary blood flow condition. Secondly, it includes conditions like interrupted aortic arch syndrome, interrupted aortic arch syndrome. And third category is your stenotic lesions. So, congenital stenotic lesions, for example, congenital aortic stenosis and congenital mitral stenosis will be included in this category. Although it is not mentioned in most of the classifications, but I am putting a small dotted arrow that sometimes, although rare, rarely there are a few conditions what you call as congenital regurgitant lesions. 
I am putting it in star because this is not mentioned in many textbooks. But congenital regurgitation lesions like aortic regurgitation and mitral regurgitation will also be included as a separate subcategory in asynotic diseases. So, this is the first classification that is asynotic versus cyanotic. Asynotic divided into two always third sometimes added as a miscellaneous group which includes your regurgitant lesions. So, these are all asynotic conditions. Moving over to the cyanotic diseases. So, as I have told you, we have acyanotic and cyanotic. So, acyanotic already discussed. So, our focus now will be on cyanotic diseases. Cyanotic diseases again can be classified into two groups based upon pulmonary blood flow. Here, there can be increased pulmonary blood flow and cyanotic diseases with decreased pulmonary blood flow. Cyanotic diseases with increased pulmonary blood flow are also called as mixing lesions because they will have mixing of the arterial and venous blood in some way or the other. It includes conditions like, since they are cyanotics, I am using a blue pen. So, transposition of great arteries, most forms, they have uh, increased pulmonary blood flow. There are exceptions to each, each one of them, but we are discussing the common general varieties. So, TGA will be cyanotic with increased pulmonary blood flow. This is your MCQ point already asked in one of the old entrance exam. Then we have TAPVC, total anomalous pulmonary venous connection. Then we have persistent truncus arteriosus, also simply called as truncus arteriosus. And it includes single atrial physiology and single ventricle physiology. They are all categorized as increased pulmonary blood flow. Then we have decreased pulmonary blood flow. Decreased pulmonary blood flow lesions will have some degree of obstruction either at the pulmonary valve or at the level of right ventricle or in the pulmonary artery so that the amount of blood cannot freely reach the pulmonary circulation. This will include conditions like the hallmark condition of this, this group that is TOF, tetralogy of fallow. It includes conditions like Abstein's anomaly. It includes conditions like tricuspid atresia. Remember that we are discussing only the major ones. There are other minor uh, conditions which cannot be put into some group or, the, or are too rare. We will be taking them up individually in one of the modules separately, but this is the classification which is categorizing the major subtypes. So, we have TOF, Epstein's anomaly, tricuspid atresia. Then there can be single ventricle with pulmonary stenosis, then we have pulmonary atresia and we have a condition called as hypoplastic right heart syndrome. Hypoplastic left heart syndrome is usually acyanotic but more specifically it is categorized as a duct dependent lesion. So, with that, that is something we will discuss later. So, this is the overall classification that you need to remember how MCQs can be asked in super speciality exam. They will ask you all of the following are cyanotic with increased pulmonary blood flow except all of the following are acyanotic with normal pulmonary blood flow except. So, this type of questions will check whether your hold over the classification is proper or not. So, this is the first thing that is classification of congenital heart disease.